It's now time, therefore, for member statements. The member for Prince Edward Hastings. And thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Earlier this month, the city of Belleville lost one of its greatest citizens, one of its most beloved businessmen, and I lost a good friend. David Mackey was described in the media as a man that people turned to when they needed help. Everything that we think about when we think about small business people, from personal service to active community support and philanthropy, was central to the David Mackey that I knew. David got into the insurance business in 1965 in Sawyerville, Quebec. He founded Mackey Insurance Brokers in 1977 out of his basement with just 25 clients. Today, Mackey Insurance has more than 5,000 clients and 12 full-time staff, a true small business success story in Quinty. To this day, you'll see Mackey Insurance sponsoring local minor sports teams. You'll see them participating in major community events, and the people who work for David Mackey proudly tell you about the impact that he had on their lives. In his personal profile, David Mackey listed his family, his Southern gospel music, and the Belleville Bulls as the things he enjoyed most, and that's where I got to know him. Over the more than 15 years I helped call Bulls games, I talked to David Mackey countless times about our beloved Bullies. He was always free with a friendly opinion about Kevin Lalonde's rebounds, P.K. Subban's slap shot or what side of the power play that Jonathan Chichu should be on. Last year, I had the great honour to present David with a scroll commemorating his 50th year in the insurance business. Belleville lost an outstanding businessman, a tremendous citizen, and a good friend when David Mackey died. To his kids, Bruce, Paul, and Carol, and his grandchildren, know that David left his community a far better place than he found it, and we're all grateful to him. Thank you very much. Thank you. For the member statements, the member from Windsor to Kunsi. Thank you, Speaker. And uh, at the end of my statement, I will be asking for unanimous consent for a moment of silence to honour a great Canadian. Um, stop the clock, please. Uh, it, I appreciate that from the member, but uh, with his indulgence, I'll wait until all the statements are done and then come back to him. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker. Howard Polly was born in Brampton, Ontario. He moved to Manitoba when he was 17. Howard joined the NDP and was elected in the riding of Selkirk in 1969. As I recall, he spent most of that campaign laid up in the hospital with a bad back after a rear-end uh, car accident. Premier Ed Schreier, who by the way, Speaker, was the first cousin of Adele Pauly, uh, named him to his cabinet. Howard was the minister who introduced a public auto insurance bill to Manitoba. He became leader of the party in 1979, was elected Premier in 1981, replacing Sterling Lyon. And Speaker, by coincidence, Sterling Lyon was born in Windsor, Ontario. During his first term, Howard Pauley ensconced French language rights into law, and he had to defend it all the way to the Supreme Court. He continued as a political warrior in his second term amid the national battles over the Meech Lake Accord and the Free Trade Act with the United States. He always fought for social justice, made sure that workers were paid fairly regardless of gender, and he enshrined protection for sexual orientation in the Manitoba's Human Rights Code. Howard Pauley stepped down as Premier in 1988 and moved back to Ontario to teach at the University of Windsor in 1991. He was a man of outstanding moral fibre. He was kind and compassionate and he made an outstanding contribution to our political science faculty. He retired in 2000, but he kept act active teaching when called upon at the university and active in many areas of social justice in our region. Howard Pauley was truly a man of the people, full of endless optimism, speaker. He had blue eyes that just sparkled and the warmest smile you'd ever see. He helped our city restore order when controversy erupted at our public library board, and I was delighted as a city councillor to join Howard on that committee. I was out of town when Howard passed during our winter break, but I want to say to Adele and the family, thank you for allowing Howard to spend so much of his time serving our community. Speaker, as a final note, when he was the Premier of Manitoba, he'd like to remind us all that Canada had two serving Premiers from Brampton because Bill Davis was the Premier of Ontario at the same time. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Ottawa or Lyon. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Last Friday, I had the pleasure to attend the mass dinner 
of the 632 Phoenix Royal Canadian Air Cadets Squadron in celebration of their 25th anniversary. More than 160 cadets are part of this squadron based in Orléans. These young Canadians aged 12 to 18 participate in a variety of fun, challenging and rewarding activities. They learn valuable life skill and work skills such as teamwork, leadership and citizenship. I would like to congratulate their commanding officer, Major Jonathan McCauley, for his commitment and dedication to these exceptional young men and young women. It was enlightening to speak to some individual who, at such a young age, already show leadership and speaking attribute. I was especially touched by a young woman by the name of Ashton Ribble. She is the cadet representative of her squadron in the Effective Speaking Program. Her speech topic was about the 100-year anniversary of women's right to vote in our country. And I found out on Monday that she won regional and will be moving on to provincials in April. All this to say that we do have a bright future with our youth in Ontario, Mr. President, and I thought it important to specify this today as we show our commitment to eliminating bullying. Merci, Mr. President. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Wellington, Halton Hills. Mr. Speaker, last Friday morning, I joined the member for Burlington and the member for Halton at Halton Regional Headquarters in Oakville. We met at the invitation of Regional Chair Gary Carr. Also in attendance were senior staff of the region and the mayors of Halton, including Mayor Rick Bennett. I wish to inform the House of some of the ideas and suggestions that were raised at the meeting. Halton's response to the Patients First discussion paper must be carefully reviewed and considered by the Minister of Health before decisions on accountability and funding relationships between public health and the LINs are made. The province needs to fulfil its commitment to cost-shared and 100 per cent funded programs. We need changes to address ambulance offload delays and the implementation of the transfer of governance for the CCAC to Halton Region. We need to see that provincial funding assistance is available for Halton's public housing plans. We need support for Halton's $3.7 billion capital infrastructure plan. We need the province to be a supportive partner in Halton's climate change mitigation programs. We need provincial approval and investment in a new Wilfrid Laurier University campus in Milton. And we need recognition and understanding of the significant impacts the proposed CN Logistics Hub may leave on Halton. Let us work together to make progress on these issues to ensure that the region of Halton continues to be a great place to live, work, raise a family, and retire. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Member Simmons, the member from Alcoma, Manitoulin. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today, I want to take the opportunity to raise awareness about the importance of organ and tissue donation. I also want to tell you about a friend and a colleague of mine who just lost his 22-year-old son, Adam Prashaw. Adam was a brave and courageous young man diagnosed with epilepsy at a young age. He, like many of our children, didn't let that slow him down. He was fierce, stubborn, and independent. Despite two courageous brain surgeries, the epilepsy took Adam in the end. Adam drowned in a hot tub on Friday, January 22nd. Adam's family, his parents, siblings, his community of friends are still grieving this enormous loss. However, on Family Day last week, they received a letter from the Gift of Life Trillium Network confirming that the organs of Adam had saved four people in terminal stages of heart, liver, and kidney failure. Everyone who knew Adam, of his generous and caring spirit, this was so typical of Adam that even in his death, he was given to others. Nothing can diminish the loss of your loved ones, but many families are confronted knowing they have given this life to others. This is a gift that we all can give, and a gift that hopefully our loved ones can receive. Currently, there are over 1,500 people in this province waiting to receive life organs, transplants. Thousands more are waiting for life-enhancing tissue transplants. I want to send my deepest condolences to Adam's loved ones. You must be so proud of him and his gift of life. I encourage everyone here in this room to visit the website www.beadonor.ca and fill out your donor registration and consent form. You could give a gift of life. Thank you. For the member statements, the member from Trinity Spadina. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, I'm pleased to stand in this House 
today to recognize Pink Shirt Day. As we all know, a safe, inclusive, accepting school environment is essential for students to succeed in the classroom and beyond. That is why today thousands of students and educators across Ontario and throughout the country will be recognizing Pink Shirt Day. I'm proud to say many schools in my riding of Trinity Spadina will be embracing Pink Shirt Day and its message of bully pre prevention and awareness. I want to take this opportunity to say to my daughter Emma and my son Matthew, who are studying at Lower Lansdowne Public School, I'm proud of you for the respect you show to your fellow students and your teachers. Mr. Speaker, this important cause furthers students' acceptance and demonstrates leadership in, in the community. We know that bullying and intimidation has an immediate impact on the well-being of our children and our youth and their ability to succeed in school. That is why the Pink Shirt Day is so important. Mr. Speaker, I want to thank every member of this House today for their recognition and participation of Pink Shirt Day and continue to promote the success and the well-being of all our students. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you for the member statements. The member from Nicholson. Speaker, students in my riding are again gearing up to challenge the world in the field of robotics. Team 1305, the Near North Student Robotics Initiative, will be launching their robot this week in advance of the North Bay Regional competition being held at Nipissing University later in March. Some 33 teams, including two from China and one from New York State, along with others from Ontario and Quebec, will be locking their mechanical horns to see whose creation is superior. This year's theme is First Stronghold. Last year, Team 1305, or Ice Cubed, as they're also known, qualified for the World Championship in St. Louis after, uh, last year after capturing the Chairman's Award. This is the 16th year for the Near North Student Robotics Initiative, and it wouldn't be possible without the volunteering mentoring efforts of people in our community like Anthony Koziol and Bev Carmichael, both of whom were recognized with awards uh, last year at last year's regional event in North Bay. Speaker, I'm looking forward to attending 1305's launch on Friday and witnessing the ingenuity and innovative skills our students in Nipissing have to offer. Speaker, they've, already, uh, they've also been huge uh, mentors to our First Nations community uh, uh, in, in my riding and have encouraged them as well to enter teams in the last couple of years. It's been very exciting. I hope members of this House will take the time to get out and support their local robotics team in the weeks ahead. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Scarborough Southwest. To rise today and highlight two programs in my riding of Scarborough Southwest that recently received funding through the Ontario Trillium Foundation Grant Program. The Warden Woods Community Centre and Mural Roots have helped residents in my riding stay healthy, active, and engaged in their community for many years. And this new funding will help them to continue and expand on their significant contributions. Mr. Speaker, Mural Roots is receiving a grant of $565,000 over 35 months to help fund the Mural Art Learning Institute, known as Murali, and to improve upon its continuum of mural making teaching programs. Warden Woods Community Centre is receiving a grant of $314,200 over 35 months to grow Active Boost, a program that promotes physical activity and healthy eating. Together, these programs will positively impact the lives of thousands of our residents in Scarborough Southwest and beyond Scarborough Southwest. In the coming weeks, Mr. Speaker, I'll be visiting both Mural Roots and Warden Woods to celebrate the new funding and to get a first-hand look at the incredible work that they're doing in the Scarborough Southwest community. These are two very deserving programs, Mr. Speaker. I'm thrilled to see them receive this vital support, and I'm very much look forward to seeing them continue to improve the lives of people in the riding of Scarborough Southwest and beyond. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Glengarry, Prescott Russell. Thank you. Thank you very much, Speaker, and I'm pleased to rise this afternoon to acknowledge another successful Ontario Good Roads Association and Rural Ontario Municipality Association combined conference down at the Royal York Hotel. 
You know, over the past three days, Speaker, I was proud to welcome nine mayors and two wardens and many councillors from my great riding of Glengarry Prescott Russell, who made the trip to Toronto again in 2016 to this important annual event. And as a former mayor myself, Speaker, I know that this yearly conference is an excellent uh, occasion for representatives from rural uh, Ontario to highlight the issues and discuss policies that strengthen, strengthen their, uh, their communities and also the province. And over the course of these days, Speaker, ministers, parliamentary assistants like Mekhe Franz Lalonde from Ottawa Orleans and members were able to hear about local investment and uh, growth opportunities and priorities throughout my great riding of Glengarry Prescott Russell. Ministers met with delegations from the town of Hawkesbury, yeah. East Hawkesbury. Hawkesbury, Village of Castleman, Nation Municipality, Township of Russell, Township of North Glengarry, the City of Clarence Rockland, the Township of Alfred Plantagenet, Champlain, uh, Champlain Township, the United Counties of Prescott Russell, the United Counties of Stormont Van Daz and Glengarry, and Eastern Ontario Wardens Caucus and the Mayor's Committee, uh, also the Nation uh, Municipality. Uh, speaker, it's always an honour to have Ontario's Premier attend this important conference, and Premier Wynne reaffirmed our commitment to providing Ontario's small and rural municipalities with expanded access to uh, predictable, stable funding in building and repairing our roads, our bridges, our water and wastewater Thank infrastructure. You. I'm proud of this government for the dedication and commitment to our municipal Thank you. A uh, gentle reminder that when I stand, you sit. Um, with the indulgence of the member from Windsor Tecumseh, uh, he's seeking unanimous consent to uh, uh, use a moment of silence for uh, the passing of his constituent. Do we agree? Agree. Please stand for everybody to do a moment of silence in tribute to uh, Howard Pauly. Pow Pow Maybe soon.